everybody. How you doing? Happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday. I'm just checking the chat here to see how everyone's doing. Hi, Leah and Rhonda and Ginger and Cindy and Star and Kathy. How's everybody doing? Hi, Sherry. Happy Friday. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Carly Bell, and I like to get together with y'all every other Friday night for a live machine embroidery tutorial where we make a project from start to finish and we like to call it sip and stitch and I have my fancy cup that I made that I never only made one and I never made any more I was supposed to make a bunch for y'all and I'm sorry I'm getting to that <laughs> um so how's everyone doing tonight let me know if you can hear me okay make sure all my technology is working there goes my camera all right now it's back on Oh, there we go. Amy can hear me. Okay, so for the first time ever, I am not by myself in my room. <laughs> Woo! My friend Amy is with me. She's my very talented, crafty friend. Um, however, she doesn't do embroidery. She does all kinds of other cool stuff. She makes the pretty epoxied tumblers. The, the koozie that I usually have my drink in, she made for me. And she does cricket crafting and all kind of fun stuff. So... This is my crafty friend, and she's in the room with me. So everybody say hi, Amy. Hi. <laughs> she will not be on camera. She is sitting on the side. She made that very clear when she came in the room. <laughs> so, I'm the beer getter. Yes, she's, she's, she's the drink beer runner. All right. So, see yeah, they're saying hi. Okay. Hey, Bethany. Bethany says hi, too. That's my friend. Um. Awesome. Okay, so I'm so excited to be back. It's been a while. We had a few, I had to rearrange the schedule a little bit because last Friday we were, that was my usual every other Friday, but we were out of town. We were in Biloxi, Mississippi. My older daughter, Abigail, had her last dance competition of the season. Thank you, Jesus. I am done with that. <laughs> All we have left is the review and then mommy gets a little time off. Um, so we had that last weekend, so I wasn't here. So we're here tonight. And good news about that is I'll be back again next Friday night because I want to try and keep that same schedule. I had it all on my calendar. It all worked out good where it didn't fall on people's birthdays and anniversaries. So I want to keep that schedule. Um, so I'll be back again next Friday. So let's talk about what we're doing tonight. Um, Melissa at Designs by Little Bee. She's one of my favorite embroidery designers. I got to meet her last summer at the Applique Getaway, and she has the cutest in the hoop projects. Um, and we've done some of her projects before. I think we did the chapstick holder um, a couple years ago, but tonight we are doing her notebook cover. So this is something like what we're making tonight. We're going to change it up a little bit. I want to show different methods. So this is the pattern we're going to do tonight. And this makes a great end of year teacher gift. And that's that's my goal. That's what I'm doing with these. I'm making these for the girls to give to their teachers as a thank you at the end of the year. So I didn't get them done in time for teacher appreciation week, of course. <laughs> but end of the year, I still have time. And because my kids are in school until June 9th, I have a little bit extra time because of the hurricane. <laughs> My kids are in school for an extra month. So this is the one we're making. This is another one of Melissa's designs that I fell in love with and had to make. So this is a rainbow. Look at this one. How cute. So what I'm going to show you tonight, you're going to be able to apply to any of her designs. Um, so we're going to go over all the steps and everything. All right, just a few things. I see Cindy saying, um, how big is the video, uh, is the video, is the design, where do I want to click this? Sorry, I can't multitask. Um, the, where's the, Amy, where's the little paper that was in front of here? You threw it away. <laughs> it's probably in the top of the garbage. Okay, these are mini composition books. Where did I get these from? Walmart? Walmart. They have them everywhere, though. I've heard they have them even three to a pack at the Dollar Tree. So go check the Dollar Tree. But this is the paper. Let me get it to where my face is not in it, and you can see it. Nope, still can't see it. Okay. 
The books are 3.25 inches by 4.5 inches. They're pretty standard for a mini composition book. I got a three pack from Walmart. Pretty sure Target has them. The Dollar Tree has them. I even saw them at Walgreens. So um, if you're in the U.S., these are pretty standard. I've heard they're hard to find in Canada, and I don't know about the U.K. So that's the size of the notebook. The design, all the designs will fit these notebooks. The design itself doesn't come in multiple sizes. They're all made to fit this notebook. However, the design does come in most designs, now we have to check them, come in two options to where you can stitch them out in a five by seven hoop, or you can stitch them out in a six by 10 hoop. Now, if your machine only goes up to a five by seven hoop, that's the biggest you can, you can stitch, like a PE 800, then you are going to wanna to watch my friend Bethany's video, which I linked down in the description box, she went over last Saturday, she posted a video on how to make this notebook in a five by seven hooping. And with that particular design, with the five by seven hoop, because this is so big, you see how big it is, um, because of this tab, this whole thing won't fit in it. So you have to do two hoopings. First, you stitch out just the tab itself. You stitch that out. You cut it out, you have it trimmed, ready to go. Then you rehoop some stabilizer and you stitch out just the cover part. And there's a step, which Bethany goes over really well, on how to insert the tab that you already stitched on a certain step. You insert that tab on here and then it all comes together beautifully. So I have a link to that video in the description below. Tonight, I'm going over the six by 10 version. So how you can stitch this out all in one hooping. So um, Bethany, and I, Bethany and I were both obsessed with all of these little notebooks. And so we got together and was like, we need to do a video on this. So she did the five by seven version. I'm doing the six by 10 version. So you get all the details between the two videos. All right. Oh, thank you, Amy. Amy posted the, uh, if you're on Facebook, you could see the link there to the little mini, um, Notebooks. You are a great assistant. You should be here every Friday. <laughs> All right. So, oh, Ursa, she loves the design. She made over 100 covers for a pop-up craft show she did. That's amazing. And I saw the little video of, and the picture she, um, she took, and it was so good. So, so good. All right. Marissa. No, no, no. Cindy, this is what I wanted to show. Um, can it be resized for a smaller hoop to fit a smaller notebook or can it be done in a repositionable four by seven hoop? Four, to answer the second part of that question, the four by seven repositionable hoop, doing either applique or in the hoop is very complicated to do when you have to do repositioning. Now, with a four by four machine that has the four by seven hoop, or a five by seven machine that has the five by 12 hoop, it can be done, but it's tricky. And what you would do is you would load one design. If you're familiar with, with those kinds of projects where you split a design, you load the first one, you stitch out one step, then you move the frame, move the hoop, load the second design, stitch one step. You have to constantly go back and forth for it to work out the same. You can't just stitch one side and then stitch the other side. So if that makes sense to you, Cindy. Um, as far as resizing, I do not know. I'd have to play around with it. Most embroidery designs can be resized, you know, less 20% or more 20% and they usually turn out okay. I find sketch designs don't resize well at all. Um, for this, it has a mixture of a fill and a bean stitch. You might be able to resize this down slightly, but definitely do a test stitch and see how it comes out. All right. Um, let's see, Krissa. So it says you're trying to set up an account and can't find anywhere on the site. Are you talking about the designs. So when you go to designsbylittlebee.com, 
um, she has a category, like she'll have uh, categories of the, all the different types of stuff she has. She has a notebook cover category. I want to say the pencil one is like on the third page or the last page, because this is one of the earlier designs she did. Um, so you can find it there or you can do the search bar pencil and paper and it should come up. She also has a really cute little keychain of a pencil that you can stitch to go along with this. All right, so let me make sure I've gone over everything. So that's the thing, one notebook size, one ultimately final size of the design, but most of her designs have two options where if you only have a five by seven hoop, you can stitch it out in two hoopings, or if you do have a six by 10 hoop, you can stitch it all out at one time. Now, I did notice the rainbow one when, because this, this one really caught my eye because I love me some rainbows. Um, this one only comes in a six by 10 option. There is no, because the way this one is stitched, it's not a tab, but it's totally connected to the back of the notebook. Um, this only comes in six by 10. So in, with any of the designs, pay attention to the description and make sure it says it has a five by seven option because this one in particular did not, okay? The other design I got, but I haven't stitched out yet is one that looks similar. It's similar to this in that it has a frame, but it has a tab, not like the rainbow, it's an actual tab and it's a little uh, sewing thread of, uh, spool of thread. That's what I wanna say. All right. Okay, hi, Kathy. Okay, so some other options with these notebooks. And it, again, it depends on which notebook you get, but it does appear all of them have an option for some applique on the front of the notebook where you can add a piece of fabric or another piece of vinyl to add something different to the front and then maybe keep an, uh, you know the underlay uh, vinyl on top. I think even with the notebook, you have the option of adding a piece of applique on the front and a piece of applique on the back. So tonight we are gonna make this pencil and paper one, but we are going to applique the front. So with this one, I skipped the applique steps and Bethany did the same thing in her video when you watched the five by seven version. She skipped the applique steps. So this is just all done on white vinyl and the lines were stitched on the vinyl. You can see I use glitter. I like glitter. Then um, tonight we're going to do that, but instead I'm going to stitch it on this rainbow cork and I'm going to applique a piece of white on top and then do the, the stitching of the notebook lines so that it still looks like a piece of paper. So that's going to make it a little fun. So we're going to go over applique tonight. So that option I think is on most of her designs. So double check on that. Again, that should all be in the description when you buy the design. And you could see it in the pictures, like the um, example pictures of each notebook. The other thing I noticed, and then again, this is with some designs, not all. And I'm going to show you this in Brilliant, so it makes maybe makes more sense. You see where the snap tab is? In the pencil, it's right in the middle. When you purchase this notebook cover, you also get the option to stitch it out where the, the snap is over here on side the pencil. And it has like a little space for the snap to go to where it's not inside the pencil. See, like I didn't have any yellow tab, so it doesn't look that great for mine. But um, I didn't realize that until after I stitched it out. <laughs> but um, you can also see the snap on the side. So all right. Okay, I see some questions about the website and her and making an account. I know I have an account. Um, if it doesn't have a spot to create an account when you first get there, put some stuff in your cart, go to checkout, and when you're done, it might ask you, set up an account, make a password now. You know, sometimes that happens when you online shop, you, you buy something, and then when you're done, it's designsbylittlebee.com. Um, so hopefully that helps. Oh, and then before y'all go shopping, let me tell you, Melissa was kind enough to give us a coupon code. So you can use the coupon code SIP and STITCH 
to save 30% off your orders of $10 or more. And the good news is, so every time she comes out with new designs, she lists them as 30% off the first week, I think, that they're out. With this coupon code, you can still get an extra 30% off of those ones that are already on sale. So you do, it's not limited to things that are not on sale. You could put anything in your cart. As long as it adds up to $10 or more, when you check out, you'll get $30 off your total purchase. So use the code SIP and STITCH. All right. So let's go to In Brilliance. Okay. Tell me, can you, nope, did I do it? I have to hit share. Share. There we go. All right. Y'all should see my In Brilliance screen now. There we go. I need to zoom out. All right, so this is, let me do that so I can see. Okay, I need comments. There we go. Um, this is what it looks like in the 6 by 10 hoop. Okay, so let's break down the steps. First is an out, a placement stitch. It's going to show you. Um, where to lay your vinyl. And so your first piece of vinyl is going to cover this whole thing. And I know I had some people on the Facebook ask the sizes. I cut my first piece of vinyl to be, was it six inches wide by 10 and a half inches tall? Um, just so right under, almost six by 10, the size of the hoop. Um, then once you do that, it goes straight into the applique. So tonight I'm going to do this applique piece but I'm gonna skip this one. So if I look, the first two step is placement, tack down, and then it does placement and tack down of the backside of the notebook. So I'm gonna skip steps four and five. I could either go ahead and delete those in Embrilliance right now and resave the design or on my machine, I'll skip it, which that's what I'm gonna do because I already have it uploaded on my machine. Then it does the satin stitch, finishing stitch on that piece of applique. And then it does it on the back. So I'm also going to skip step seven. You have the option to skip all of these. That's what I did in the, the example notebook I showed you earlier. You can skip all those steps. Then it goes into the details of the, the sheet of paper with the lines and the little circles. Then it goes into the pencil, all the steps of the pencil, which is all mainly fill stitch. Then it does a, a little tiny circle. And this is telling you where to put your snap. Now, the, this design, if you see it at the top, it says snap cover 6x10, snap inside pencil. Uh, this one, let's zoom out, is another file you get when you buy the design. You see here, the snap is outside of the pencil, and it says it here in the description of the file, snap outside pencil. So that's the difference between those two files um, is you get a little bit extra tab if you don't want your snap to be in the middle of your pencil. Okay, so this is the one we're gonna do tonight. This is another option for you. Both of these are for a six by 10 hoop. Now, if you only have a five by seven hoop, you have to do two hoopings. And she gives you the option of stitching just the tab with the snap on the outside just the tab with the snap on the inside. Is something wrong? Let me go to, are you on YouTube or Facebook? Okay. Oh, it's saying break, I'm breaking up. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my brilliant screen. Let's see, y'all hear and see me? Oh, we have trouble. Streaming to Facebook. This may be an issue on Facebook's end. It is possible the stream was ended or deleted. Oh, that's no good. I don't know how to fix that. Okay. Y'all let me know. Facebook might. Nope. It's got a. I don't know how to fix it. But apparently we lost Facebook. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to fix it either. 
says I can view on Facebook. I mean, if you're live, you're showing live on Facebook. So but it's just, it. it's just um, stopped or blurry or whatever, um, frozen. It's, it's, I, I click on you and it's not even It's saying I'm freezing on YouTube, too. It's probably my kids using up all my bandwidth. That's what I the problem is. <laughs> That's probably what it is. The kids are using. Okay, so Norma says it's okay on YouTube. All right, sorry if I'm not having great, um, I don't know what the word, internet. It doesn't work well. All right. Okay, Krista says the Facebook is working but had a bit of buffering. It's showing like an exclamation point on my end, like Facebook ain't working. So, but I don't know how to fix it. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed it comes back on. If you're on Facebook and it's not working good, maybe try switching over to YouTube. All right. Okay, where were we? So we went over all of the different options you get, and that was with the pencil notebook, um, the pencil and paper cover. It's not going to be like that for all of the designs. So check that out when you look at the description because she has tons of adorable ones, really, really cute ones, like any – any of your interests or hobbies, she probably has a notebook cover to go with it and holidays, all the cuteness. So just look at the description of the design. I think that's the most options you could get though, is what I showed you tonight. All the applique options, the tab options, the five by seven versus six by 10. All right, so now let me show you the supplies and what we're using. Okay, so I could see 79 people are watching, but I don't know if that's all on YouTube or not. So we'll see. Okay, this is my six by 10 hoop. Tonight I am using my brother NQ3600D. I got that machine last spring, but it is already discontinued. They now have the 3700D. However, that machine, for some reason, is not available to purchase online. You have to go to a dealer to purchase it. Um, the Baby Lock has an equivalent. Now, my machine is sewing and embroidery. Um, Baby Lock has a equivalent um, sewing and embroidery to my machine, and it's called the Vesta, I think, Vesta. Um, and it has a, a five by seven and a six by 10 hoop. And you can also buy a four by four hoop for it. So it goes up to six by 10. Now that's sewing and embroidery. If you just want an embroidery machine that goes up to a six by 10 hoop, you can get the Brother NQ1700E or the Baby Lock um, Flare. So those are your two options if you just need embroidery only and don't need a sewing machine as well. I am. I always said I'd rather have a separate, but I have the space to have separate. I have a whole room dedicated to, to crafting. So I have a spot for an embroidery machine and I have a spot for a sewing machine. Um, but I have two combo machines and I use them back and forth. They're, they're wonderful. Um, if you're in a tight space and you only have the table and you can only pull out the machine when you have time to do a project, then the combo machine really is the way to go because then you have the both of them. Um, and don't have to worry about housing two machines or a table to put two machines on. So it's really your preference and what works for you. So this is the six by 10 hoop. I am using tearaway stabilizer. You can use cutaway also if you want. It doesn't matter. It's, it's um, the, because um, all of these designs were using faux leather cork vinyl, um, you don't have to worry about stabilizing it really well. So you can use tear away or cut away. The, what I chose to use tonight is, this is a rainbow cork. And I forgot to put this, I'm gonna go and fix it when I'm done. But I forgot to, another store, cause I put like a whole list of stores you could buy embroidery vinyl from. And I totally forgot the store I bought this from. I bought this at the applique getaway last year. And they had tons of faux leather and vinyl and cork. And the name of the store was Sweet and Sassy Blanks. And I'm going to add their website to the description when this video is over. So you can check them out. But it's sweet, just the letter N, 
sassy blanks. And so you could Google them, but they have all kinds of good stuff. That's where I got this rainbow cork from. Um, I cut this to be about six by 10. So it's going to cover the whole inside the hoop when it does the placement stitch. Now, because I'm doing an applique, I wanted um, the notebook paper to be white, but I have this really pretty paisley white um, that I thought would be cute. And I, because it's, it's kind of see-through and this is really busy, I went ahead and ironed some interfacing on the back so that for one, that the, the fabric would stay nice and stiff when I'm stitching it, but um, also so that it wasn't so see-through. So be because I'm using white, I put a little interfacing on the back. When I did this one and I used this rainbow fabric, I didn't put anything on the back. I just ironed it before I put it down so that it would be nice and flat when it's stitched and it worked perfectly fine. So that's, that's an option if you're using white with a busy background. Now, when we get to the step of the back of the notebook, you, you want to cover, so let's open this up so you could see what we're talking about. Okay, when you take the notebook out, this is what it looks like. You don't see any of the stitching from the front. You don't see any of the stitching from the pencil, right? All of that gets covered up. There's a few different ways to do it. This is just the way I decided to do it. Melissa actually shows a way that I like as well, but I didn't have a really thin, you'll understand when I explain it in a minute. Okay, so say this is the back of the hoop now. We've got everything stitched. We need to cover it up, right? I'm going to cover up the whole thing in white and then she will have placement marks in the design showing you where to put your flaps that hold the notebook in. So we're going to do something like this on the back when we're done and we're going to tape everything to make sure it stays in place. Um, another option would be, okay, so say this is the stitching right? This is just the back of the hoop and it's stitching. So we see what we're going to do. You can cut a flap to go from here to the pencil like this, right? And you can cut a flap just to do this. You could leave the back of the notebook holder because a notebook's going in there. You're never really going to see it. You could leave that open and you don't have to cover it. That's just a personal preference if you don't want to see all those stitches. What Melissa did was she tucked in a piece of black cutaway stabilizer. So it's real thin, but it covered everything up. I'm doing it to where mine is thick. I got three layers of vinyl going on here um, between the front of the notebook, the back cover, and the flap. My machine handled it fine. So if you do have issues with your machine not being able to stitch through those three layers, then do Melissa's method where you just do the flaps and not put anything back here. Or if you put something back here, put it to where it just covers this space here where it, you don't need to have it all up in, in the flaps. So I hope all that makes sense. All right, but that's all the pieces that I'm using for tonight. The front cover, the back cover, the flaps to hold, and then my piece of applique for the notebook paper. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I just have my tearaway stabilizer and I'm putting this on top of the hoop and then I push this down. And that's what I love about in the hoop projects. You only have to hoop stabilizer. You don't have to figure out placement. You don't have to worry about holding material out the way. Beautiful, just hoop stabilizer. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the machine. Any questions before I go over there because I'm not, you're not in the picture. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to see the comments, but however, I have, I have Amy here. Amy can tell me, so. So this is my machine, the, the 3600D. Now, lesson learned when you're using big hoops, and I had the same issue with my PE770 when I used that long repositionable hoop, make sure your machine is far away from this back wall because you see this hoop 
it's going to come over here at some point. And so you have to make sure it's not bumping into anything. So I know I have, I have stuff. What do I have back here? I just have my extra hoops. I have this little tool kit. But my hoop is, there's nothing back there that's going to hit my hoop. All right, so I am hooping. I need to find my design. Were you on YouTube or Facebook? Uh, YouTube. I don't even know where this file is from because I never do YouTube. So it usually has a live comment option. Maybe this one. Hmm. Oh, you have to be signed in. I am. I thought I was signed in. You look like you're on in Safari. Go on a YouTube app. Oh, there you go. Now, you, now I see your A. But I don't see your A anymore. Yeah. I don't know. We'll That's no worries. We'll figure it out. Uh, I'm still looking for the design. Okay, here we go. That's the rainbow. That's the pencil. Set. Nope, that's the sewing. That's the sewing needle. Back. Okay. I know it's on my USB stick because I stitched it already. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, now let's go through. Okay, rainbow, sewing. That was the spool of thread. This is the pencil one. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, and edit, embroidery. Okay, so it is... Any special needle when using vinyl? No, I use the 7511. I think it's still a ballpoint on there. So um, I, I kind of thought you needed a sharp needle for vinyl. But talking with, um, I went to a nice um, class on needles that Lisa Shaw did last summer. And uh, she said she still uses the regular 7511 um, ballpoint that the sharp is not necessary in that it might even leave more like puncture looking holes in the vinyl but I've used both I, I don't see a really big difference so I'm not one that changes my needle <laughs> except when I really 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 need to so I usually just leave the same needle on for all my projects um okay so what do I have on here white thread let's change the thread color so that you can actually see what's happening And I'll change it back to white after because we will, white will be our next thread that actually gets seen. Let's do this gray so that you can see. Okay. All right, put my needle, my presser foot down. I got a green light. I'm ready to stitch. So now it's going to stitch the placement, showing me where to put my first front layer of vinyl. Thank you. <laughs> I need the sipping, yeah. Okay. Ah, I like this. Jessica says... I know, always know to change my needle when it starts clunking. <laughs> All right. All right, looks like Facebook still isn't working. I don't know if maybe I can. No. I don't know what to do to, to make Facebook work. Can we go live? 
I'm scared it's going to delete. I don't want it to stop the YouTube. And because with YouTube, that's happened to me before where I, it stopped. My live just stopped and I had to restart a new one. And then everybody had to go back and find it. And it was a big old thing. Okay. We have a placement stitch. So can you see that? So that is showing me right where to put my, I'm going to put, this is where I'm going to do my rainbow cork for this section. Now, notice these little marks here. That is your marks for your flaps that hold the notebook in. That's going to be from, those are going to be important on the underneath when we're taping everything to the bottom before the last step. You do that the, before the, the last step is going to be to put everything together. So before that last step, that's when you're going to tape your holder pieces on the back. So that's what those little marks are for. All right. So now that placement stitch is done. Now we need the rainbow cork and that's going to go on the front like this. And like I said, I cut mine to be about six by 10 inches and it covers it nicely. What's up? I don't need a cold drink. I'm Amy needs a cold drink. I only have, I, I don't think I have any more Malibus. I only got Truly. Okay. So what's next? Now that's there. It's not going to do a whole nother outline again. Now it's going to show me the placement stitch for the applique of the, the piece of paper, right? So that's what it's doing now. So it's showing me where my material needs to go which on this rainbow cork is hard to see, but I can see it here. I see this nice outline. I already cut my fabric. Um, and some people ask, like, oh, I know I, because I'm doing video, I like to have everything pre-cut before we start to try and save time. Um, if you want to do that, and if the directions don't tell you exactly how big to cut your fabric, open the design in in brilliance and print it out on your printer. It prints out true to size. And so you can use that paper as a guide on how big to cut um, any applique pieces or pieces for in the hoop. So I put my white down, I put my presser foot down. Now it's going to tack that down. Thank you. This is margarita. Okay. Yeah. Amy is, is my friend that shows me all the good things to drink. She's the one that showed me those Malibus and those, those Trulies. I know, but you find the good drink. That's good. Yeah, that's not bad. I'm not a margarita person, and that's, that's good. And it says chili in it, so I would just normally not even go for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have the paper applique, but now we have to trim it. So I'm gonna take this off and go to the craft table. Okay, I think you should see me now. All right, where's my scissors? These are my favorite applique scissors. And I'm just going to trim that as close as I can to the stitching without cutting all the stitches. Okay. All right, so that is all trim. So that is our notebook paper. That's our paper. All right, so now let's go back over to the machine and I'm gonna show you how I'm skipping the next couple steps, right? Because if you remember when we, when we showed this in, in Brilliance, it showed, and I could see it on my machine now, the next step is to do a placement on this side, then a tack down on this side. 
and I'm going to go ahead and change my thread because the next thing I'm actually going to do is a satin stitch on this paper and I'm going to do that in white. So first let me change my thread and then I'm going to show you skipping those steps. So if you have a brother or baby lock machine, it is super easy to move around in your design, whether you want to skip a whole step or you just need to back up a few stitches because your bobbin thread ran out or the thread, the top thread broke or your needle broke or something happened. You can always get back to where you need to be. They make it really easy. And they have a needle plus minus button. Let's see how well you can see that. Let me do it this way. So, all right, don't get car sick on me. I got it. Okay. Let me back up. Okay, so this is my screen, right? It's showing me my next step is the, the applique on the back of the notebook. I don't want that. So I'm going to hit this needle plus minus. Now I have the option to back up single stitches, whether it be one stitch, 10 stitch, 100 stitches. I could go forward one stitch, 10 stitches, 100 stitches. The spool is to go back an entire step or forward an entire step. So I want to go forward two steps. So you see that's I was on step four. Now it's on step five. I want to skip that one too. I want to go to step six and I'm going to hit OK. And now it's showing the satin stitch on this side of the notebook. That's where I want to be. So I got my white thread loaded. I threaded my needle. Yes. All right. And now I'm going to lower this and see it's going to jump back to there. So it's going to take a few minutes to stitch. You know, with any satin stitching, the time it takes to stitch is much longer. So it's going to take a few minutes to stitch that out. Okay, y'all see all my junk? Let's zoom in there. All right, so now it's going to stitch out the satin around there. So while it's doing that, yes, and this is the NQ3600D. Um, ooh, what's the cover on your applique scissors? Oh, Bethany, that, um, that came with the scissors. I got these scissors from Sewing Machines Plus. They are... Havels. Um, oops. I don't know if you could see. It says it on the side there. Havels. I have a link to them in the description box. But I love they, they came with this little cover and I love it. And it also helps me because I have so many of these tweezer scissors. I know this one's my favorite because it has the cover on it. I know my other ones are dull and don't cut very good. If it, if it doesn't have this cover on it, it is no good. All right, so that's, yeah, that's my favorite scissors. Um, um, okay, so Chantel, let me click these so you can see them in the video. All right, so Chantel said, does the cork show through the white? It does not, but it did at first. I ended up ironing some interfacing on the back of the white fabric. You can try heat and bond light. That usually helps. I recently invested in some Pellon fusible interfacing for some, um, some quilt projects I plan on doing. So I, I was actually the first time I used it was tonight. This is the one I got right here. Um, Pellon. I got this one. I thought this was SF 101 when I bought it on Amazon. I get it in the mail. It does not say SF 101. So I clicked the wrong thing. So I went back to Amazon and got real SF 101. That's this one. And it says it on there. I think this is the one like everybody used. I'm, I'm not super familiar with sewing and interfacing for sewing. I know about stabilizers for embroidery, but interfacing for sewing is new to me. Um, I ended up using this one on the back of the white um, but I think they both, I think this one, this one feels like, um, almost like poly mesh, um, stabilizer to me. This one's actually woven. This one looks like a really thin piece of white fabric. 
Um, but I know a lot of people use these in projects uh, for quilting and then um, bag making. Um, I watch Jess at Okla Roots and she makes all kinds of cute bags. When she uses regular cotton fabric to make bags, she irons this on the back of it. So that was another reason why I got this one. I'd like to make a bag. We'll see if I ever get there. Um, so this is what I used on the back of the white fabric. And I'll show you up close when it's done. I don't think you could see the cork through it. And that paisley print on my white fabric helped as well. I think if I was just using a solid piece of white fabric, then yes, you would see it through it. What's up, Elise? Uh-uh, watch all the cords. Watch all the cords. Rainbow and froggy. Which, explain more. Is it a stuffed animal? It's a little toy? No, it's not a toy. It's all kids. It's like a sandy corner in the yard. Oh, it's in, um, the, in that new cabinet Mommy got in the drawer at the bottom. The one you can paint. That new cabinet Daddy put together for me in the front room, the white one. They got a drawer at the bottom. It's in there. All right, watch the cords. You're welcome. <laughs> um, if y'all are on my email newsletter, um, I showed the picture of Elise. So Elise turned six on Tuesday and I'm like, where has time gone? Like she has gotten so big and I was crying cause I was watching my first sip and stitch video that I ever did on YouTube and she's in most of it you know, fussing about something, <laughs> but she's so little and she got so big. So, I know she's so big. All right. I, oh, I know. Mm -mm. I can't deal. All right. So slowly but surely that satin stitch is going around and then we're going to move. We're going to skip another step because the step after this is to do the satin stitch on the, um, the backside of the notebook. We're going to skip that. And then we'll get into all the notebook stuff. I just don't want to ask. That's like... I'm good. Like Harvard. We, we... <laughs> all right. Okay, Chantel said, when will the moving be taking place? All right, I was just, my friend Amy is here and I was showing her all my plans. I was showing her, I posted it, I think in the Facebook group and on the email newsletter, the picture of the design for the new room. Um, and it's, okay. <laughs> um, the design for the new room is fun. I'm, uh, I am using most of what I have in here I'm considering, I haven't told my husband this yet, but he has to take apart my craft table in order to get it out of this room anyway, right? I'm thinking about just building a new one while we're at it, while I'm making an Ikea order. Um, so I might recycle the shelves that are on my current craft table. I have one of those like nine cubby, it has a nine cubby shelf, nine cubby shelf and the tabletop. Um, Recycle those shelves and put them in the closet. The tabletop is all messed up. I, I left the iron on it. It's all cracked and bubbled up in one section. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking about making a new one using the Ikea Calyx, um, the four cube shelves, and still have it on wheels. It's, and it might be like a smidge bigger. Um, and then I'm still going to use this L-shaped desk that you see my machine is on right now. And then I'll tell you about the rest in a second. So... We're done with this. The next step is applique over here, um, uh, the satin stitch. I want to skip that. So I'm going to do my same thing I did earlier. The needle minus plus, and I'm going to hit the spool plus. I'm going to jump up to step eight. Now that is the blue lines on here. So I'm going to change my thread. I think I saw somebody ask about my thread stand. So when I'm using a flatbed machine, I really don't like the spool holder. I find my thread doesn't feed off it evenly and it it messes up. So even since I started when I used my PE770, I've always used, let's see, you think I have enough thread to finish this? I could see through it. Let's play chicken. See if it works. I think 
I don't even think I have another one this color. I need more thread. Um, we're going to play chicken with the blue thread. Let's see if we get it. Um, so the thread spool, let me show you. So like I said, I never use this. I've always used a spool holder. Can you see that? I got it on Amazon. I think I have a link for it on my website. I have a, a blog post on my website that's like all of the basic supplies you need to get started with embroidery. It's on that post, but it's on, it's from Amazon and it, it, I find the tensions a lot better when you use that. Okay. Blue thread is loaded. We skipped that piece over there. Now it's going to do the blue lines. So let's see if we have enough thread. I think we have enough. Now, if you have a machine that does not cut jump stitches, you're going to have big old jumps from this line to here. So you're going to have lines. What I would do is I would pause the machine and cut them as you go. Whenever you, like I have a little bit here, I'm going to go ahead and get. Um, don't be afraid if, if to just pause your machine. Just press that button. It'll, pa it'll pause. It won't, it won't bite you. Don't, don't put your fingers under there while it's going. Just pause it, cut what you need to cut, start it again, okay? But all the 6 by 10 machines, they cut jump stitches. So if you're doing the same project I'm doing tonight in the 6 by 10 hoop, you won't have that problem. But the 5 by 7 hoop, you will have those jump stitches. And when I was on my old machine that didn't cut them, I would always just let it start stitching and stop it and cut them as I went so they, they didn't get in the way. Oh, okay. Okay. No. All right. I'm moving. I'm moving into another room in my house. So the way my upstairs is situated, we have three bedrooms and a playroom. Right now it's my girl share the biggest bedroom. My craft room is in a bedroom and I had a guest room. My dad was living with me. Um, and my dad was in there. However, my dad finished redoing his house. It, it got flooded and all messed up from Hurricane Ida last August. Um, he gutted it, redid the whole inside. It looks really good. Um, and he and my stepmom moved out. So the guest room is now empty. The girls are ready for their own bedrooms. So I told them I would make a deal with them that they can have their own bedrooms if they switch and give me the bedroom they're currently in <laughs> so I'll get the little bit bigger bedroom and that's where I move in my craft room don't know when hopefully we get it all done this summer we were going to like renovate a little bit um with painting the walls tearing the carpet out put new floors and I have popcorn ceilings and I really want to scrape the popcorn off my ceilings um so think about renovating one room at a time and then when that room is painted and ready to go, I'm going to move all my craft stuff in there. And I'm going to get some new furniture from Ikea to get more storage. The main thing is that I am going to have a wall that I have enough room to put some cabinets. Like um, a set of base cabinets, but the base cabinets don't poke out as far as this. The base cabinets only poke out like 18 inches and they could have a little countertop and then some cabinets on the wall above it. That's going to be the main thing. And that's going to be a lot of storage. And then I was thinking about getting some of those drawer units that Ikea has, the Alex drawers, and they will slide right underneath this desk perfectly, I think. All right, we're done with the blue. Next is the little pink line going down. So I'm gonna change to my pink thread. And I had more than enough blue thread. We didn't even get close to playing chicken with my thread. Look at that, we still got a lot. <laughs> I can make three more notebooks. All right, what are we doing? Light pink. All right, light pink. All 
I also forgot to mention, you can personalize all of these notebooks if you want to add a name or some initials or something fun saying. Um, you can do all of that in Brilliance um, before you start. And you're just going to want to stitch out that name before the last step of adding on the, the back. You know how the last step is the part that tacks the back of the notebook and puts it all together? You just have to stitch that before that last part. And you can do that all in Brilliance. All right, I'm cutting the pink thread. Now it's gonna do the three little circles. I'm gonna do that in a dark gray. And I think once it's done with this, then it's gonna move on to the details of the pencil. And I'm hoping the pencil shows up good on this cork. Because previously I stitched it on white vinyl and it came out really nice but it's, you should see it good on the cork. We'll see. So again, you'll have jump stitches here if you're doing this in a, um, a PE 800, but you can cut those after. They'll just be little lines between those three circles. Oh, the coupon code is um, SIP and STITCH. I'll put it up on the screen again. Yeah, so that's the coupon code to get 30% off your order of $10 or more. So this is what I'm talking about. You see the red behind this pencil in this picture? Um, I'm hoping the rainbow cork, it looks good behind the pencil there. So we'll see. All right, so now it's done stitching. And I'm sorry, I still got that comment on there. All right, um, I'm done stitching the notebook. The notebook, the paper is done. The sheet of paper is done. Now it's gonna do everything with the pencil. And the first part of the pencil is the yellow part. So I'm gonna load my yellow. And all of the pencil is mainly like a fill stitch. All right, so now we start the pencil. So yeah, let's hope, hope that bright yellow shows up nice on top of that cork. I think it should. Um, what size is the notebook? The notebook is three and a half by four and a half. It is a mini composition book. This is the tag that came with it. I bought a three pack from Walmart. Um, you can also get them at Dollar Tree. I think at Target, and I see, I've seen them at Walgreens. So this is what the notebook looks like. A little tiny, but it's three and a half inches by, no, three and a quarter inch by four and a half inches tall. And all of her notebook designs are made to fit this notebook. Okay. Oh, this is so funny, Jessica. This sounds like my dog. So she has a Viking and it does cut jump stitches. However, it makes um, a sound every time it cuts them and it makes her dog go nuts. <laughs> that sounds like something Ozzy would do. That's so funny. Um, all right. All right, Simone, um, I do have several four by four friendly projects for past sip and stitches that we've done. Every time I do one that is four by four friendly, I make sure to say that um, in the 
the description or in on the sip and stitch homepage. So we have we do have a lot of four by four friendly designs. Unfortunately, tonight is not one of them. So I'm sorry. All right. Cynthia, we are oh, Cindy already got you. So we're at designs by little B. The link is in the description box. Oops. All right. So we're done with the yellow. It shows up. It's not as bright as I was hoping because that one actually is a little sketchy. It's not super fill, not a dense fill. All right. Now there's some lines in the pencil. I'm going to do that in black. You think Adam's out there cutting grass with him? <laughs> I know, but do you think while Chris was, was cutting grass, Adam was like, give probably me that. Let me do it. it. I was probably looking at him. <laughs> Adam cut grass yesterday. <laughs> Amy's husband, he does not mess around with cutting grass. His, his yard is always perfect, and Chris was cutting grass when they got here. I'm sure Adam was giving him tips. Oh, you missed the spot. That's probably what he was doing. <laughs> All right, so these are little details in the pencil. Oh, I think this helps. This makes the yellow pop with that black on top. So hopefully that helps it. And then we're gonna cut around it as well. So I think that will help. All right, now it is the pink of the eraser. I was so excited when I got this machine because it's it's you know, the same, you know, it's it's the upgraded version of my PE770, my first machine that I have, but it has a color screen. It's beautiful. I could actually see what the next step is on the machine. I don't have to keep going back and forth to my computer. When I did all my first projects on the PE770, it's so hard to tell what the next step was because the screen was so small and it was a grayscale. And I could not tell. I always had to have my laptop open next to it so I knew what was coming. But on here, I could see everything. All right. Hmm? Oh, somebody said about the yellow, go over it two times. Yeah, that's a good idea, Jessica. I used, I used to cut grass when I was younger. My daddy has the big because like my grandma they have a front yard my grandma then the, the yard behind my grandma then my daddy then they had big old field behind my dad i used to cut that with a rod and lawn mower um when i was a teenager it wasn't fun but I, it wasn't bad it wasn't bad corner lots no Yay, Chantel has the um, the NQ1600. So that's the same as my machine, except it's um, embroidery only. And she loves it. I know, I was so excited about this one. Yes, and this is, this is a faster project. Now, the rainbow one took longer because all the satin stitching and the rainbow. Um, if you didn't see it earlier, this is another one of Melissa's Designs by Little Bees notebooks that I made. Um, so all of these satin stitches in the rainbow made the project take a lot longer. Now, when I stitched this one and I did no applique, I just did it on white vinyl. This one was super fast, super duper fast. So the most, the majority of our project tonight is just that satin frame around the applique. All right, so we're done with the eraser. Now is like the little metal piece in between the eraser and the yellow of the pencil. We only got a couple more steps, guys. And then we'll assemble the back of the notebook and trim it. I'm lucky the, no the notebooks that I did make are still on my craft table because I showed them to my girls and they immediately was like, I need that! So they had the same reaction to it as I did when I saw it on Melissa's website. <laughs> I need that. El Patron gift cards. That's a good idea. I, I gave them all Starbucks gift cards for teacher appreciation. I did that for Christmas too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So they're getting, I'm just going to do a nicer thing for them. Some of our pets and sisters are going to Not everybody's going to take their pictures. Aww. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. So tell us in the comments what of y'all's moms, of those of you that are moms with school age children, what are you doing? What did you do for teacher appreciation or what are you doing for end of year? What are your, some of your ideas? All right. So that is, nope, we're not done. It's still, it does like two rows of satin stitches for that metal looking piece. Okay. Yes, crazy. So Chantel, I'm going to show you tonight. I have scissors that I use specifically for cutting out. Sorry, I'm collecting a mess here. I have scissors that I specifically use for cutting out vinyl. It, this just happened to be a pack of scissors I got at Joann's. I think it came with like a big scissor. And, and it came with this one. This one's a micro tip. Titanium nonstick fiskers. Um, this is what I've just chosen to use on all of my vinyl projects and it has turned out well. Um, I always try to keep like a eighth or a quarter of an inch away from the seam when I trim around. And really it's just the more you practice, the better you get. Um, when I get to these tight corners here, I'll just, cause most of the time I'm not going all the way through. Like I just cut and I don't close the scissors all the way. When I get to parts like this, I close the scissors all the way. So that I get a nice crisp corner. So we'll, you'll see when we trim out our notebook that we're doing now. All right, so we're done with that. So two more steps left for the pencil, like the wooden part of the pencil and then the, the tip, and then we'll assemble the back. and then we'll trim it. So then you'll see that part. Ah, nice, okay. Yes. Okay, Amy bought some, they're glass mugs, but they are coated so that you could sublimate them. Yes, we need to play with that. Yes. Yes, mom cups. I need iced coffee and... Uh-huh. I how to I'll drink iced coffee. I just don't make any for myself. If somebody else made it for me, I would drink it. Um, yay. Okay. Rachel, she just made the pencil notebook cover with the five by 12 repositionable hoop without applique. And it was super easy. Awesome. I could see that working because loaded it in brilliance, split it, load the first, essentially the first half of the design is it's going to show you the placement for half of the notebook. You just have to make sure that you cut your piece of vinyl big enough. So like it's, um, it is, I got my vinyl cut to be six by 10 and a half. So cut your vinyl to piece to be that big. Then load the first half of the, of the design, which may just be like the paper part. Lay your whole piece of what is like my rainbow cork down. Stitch out everything about the paper. Move the hoop, upload the second design, stitch out the tab. Then you would have to take the hoop off, assemble your back pieces to cover and your, and your little tabs to hold the notebook. Go back to the first design, stitch half of it, go to the second design, stitch the other half so that it holds it all together. I could see that working. We'll have to play around with that. I also have to open up the design. Yeah, it should work in the five by seven hoop because we know the notebook cover itself works in the five by seven hoop. That would be a fun, a fun um, experiment to try. 
All right, so we are done with the wooden part of the pencil. Now it's just the lead. I'm gonna do that in black and then we'll take it off the machine. And yeah, so if you're doing the repositionable hoop, you just would stitch both sides with skipping the last step, assemble the back, tape all your vinyl on the back and then load it back on the machine and just stitch out the last step on both the both of the splits of the design, if that makes sense. I could see that working. It's when you have stuff going on, because there's not a lot going on in the middle of this, I think it would work. All right, so we're done with all of the front. The, now it's, nope, I'm wrong. It's one more step, and that is the placement of the tab. So it's gonna stitch, I'm gonna just, it doesn't matter what color you stitch this part in because you're not gonna see it. The, the snap is gonna cover it up. So this is showing me a little hole right where my snap should go. Now, she does not make a little hole where your snap should go on this side. And I'm gonna show you why. All right, now it's on the last step and that's the full outline again. Not doing that right now. We're stopping, we're taking the hoop off. All right, so this is what we're left with right now. We got the notebook and the pencil. So that easily can be split. It's just that big connecting design all together that would have to be split in that five by 12 hoop. I think the thing I always try to stay away from with the five by 12 hoop is those um, zippered bags. Those I think you'd have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because people that have the persona want to do that. However, the persona only goes to an eight by eight hoop. It does not have a six by 10 option. So the biggest bag you can stitch in a persona, if they don't have an eight by eight option is five by seven. So, and people want to do the six by 10 on the persona with the repositionable hoop and it is hard. All right, here we are. We have our notebook. Let me see, they have some tweezers behind you on top of that machine. Thank you. I'm gonna trim up. I see some little um, stray threads. I'm gonna clean up while I have this right here. Y'all yeah, probably don't even see these, they're so tiny. Okay, that's done. Now let's talk about the back. Okay, remember we talked in the beginning, these reference marks, that is important for these tabs. Now, something I've noticed with the way I'm doing it, and you'll see, they won't make a big difference on this notebook because, where's the notebooks I made? Oh, right here. Um, because I'm doing both the tabs and the backing in white, right? I'm doing them the same. However, I do try to, I, I did try to trim it. You'll notice with this one, I did the holder part in cork, but the whole back is in yellow. So you see right here is, that's how wide that piece was when I did this. So this part still stayed. So if that bothers you, I would trim this to be as close to this line as possible so you have a nice clean piece. And if I wanted to measure it, it is exactly hmm, a smidge more than an inch and a half. What would that be? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five eighths, an inch and five eighths. My husband would be proud of my precision right there. So right now mine is two and a quarter. 
So it's a, it's a bit bigger. So I could trim it and make it. All right, I think I can use these lines if I want it to be an inch. This is an inch and a half. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, that's an inch and a half. Let me trim. No, it needs to be a bigger than an inch and a half, inch and five eighths. Let's do it. Inch and three quarters. No, this is an inch and five eighths right there, I think. All right, let's try. Let's see if I did a good job. Now I can put that there. That's nice. That lines up. Nice. And that should catch those stitches. We'll see if I do a good job or not. All right, but I'm gonna have to place it right where it needs to go. So that's your, on this side, it doesn't matter because all that's gonna get trimmed. Okay. So what I can do is a couple options. Let's just, let's play around with this because I just eyeballed it when I did it with my other notebooks, but let me try and be a little more precise. I'm going to put some pencil marks. Around those corners. You'll notice these pieces are a lot longer or taller than they need to be. This one is just a little bit, you got room on either side, the top and the bottom. Does that make sense? So now I'm covering up the whole thing, right? The pencil, the notebook, everything. And I'm gonna use my paper tape. And, oh, my paper tape just ran out. I do, but I don't know where I put it. <laughs> it's fine. I got masking tape. Here we go. Masking tape works too. This is what I used before I discovered Kimberbell. Kimberbell had the really nice paper tape that just ran out. All right. That's the back. It's covered. Now I can see my nice marks. Now I can put this right where it was. And I'll use my masking tape. It's gonna look better in the new room because I'm actually gonna have drawers and cabinets. I know, I collect and I collect, but I need to have like zones of specific spaces you would you would die if you see i'm gonna show you the video um my friend bethany that's on here she has a youtube channel she's the one that's did the other um notebook. the other notebook the five by seven um her craft room is to die for yeah. she just filmed the whole tour of it it's gorgeous get rid of my kids first. you get rid of the kids first she has three kids so she did it with three and one of them's uh what i think he's a year old bethany or he's about to turn a year um, she's got that with a baby and she's, she has a basement. So her craft room's in the basement. We don't have basements in Louisiana. We'd be flooded. We'd be flooded. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to cover this with a lot of tape now because this is going to move a lot on the back of the, um, on the bottom. And I don't want it to, to get caught up anywhere. So I'm. I'm putting tape. I might not put tape here though. Well, I'll put it. It's going to stitch right where I put the tape, but it's fine. It can stitch through it. I'll try and put it. Oh, you know what? No, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I barely got it on there. Okay. So I'm all taped up, right? We got the big white piece to cover all the stitching so you don't see none of the back. And then we have the two pieces that, um, 
that's actually going to hold your notebook, these, these pieces here, right? Okay. So that I think is done. I got it taped up. Now I don't push too hard when I do this because I'm, I'm using a regular hoop. I don't want to pop the front of my hoop out. So I'm going to turn it over and now I'm going to really get that tape to stick and not move. So you can do that. So now that's, it's super flat. When you do it this way, you see how they got a lip here. It's not super flat. So you don't want to push too hard on this end. Okay. So ready for the last step. Now you have some options here and ooh, I, I hope I finally remember this. I have a trick to help prevent nesting on the back. Cause sometimes when you do in the hoop projects, you get a little knot where it started stitching. And well, I got one here too. Um, I'm gonna show you a way we could hopefully prevent that. But what I wanted to say, the color, right? I'm gonna stitch this in white. So it's going to be white on the front. And because I have a bobbin thread, white bobbin, it's going to be white on the back. Now, if you use black to cover all this up and you don't want that white bobbin thread stitching, you can, one, with black in particular, you can buy black bobbins. Or if you're using red or pink or yellow, whatever you want, and you want that bottom color to match the vinyl or whatever it is you're using underneath, you can wind a bobbin with your embroidery thread and change it out at this step so that your bobbin thread matches. So that is if you want to do that. I have done that on several projects when I think it matters. Sometimes I don't think it matters. Um, this one, I, th I think it looks nice. I think white would look nice with any color, to be honest. But like this one, everything is white. So the white stitching goes in. But this one is cork and yellow. I didn't change the bobbin. It's still white and it looks nice. So that's just a personal preference. If you would like your bobbin thread to match whatever color you're lining this with, you just wind a bobbin with it. It can be embroidery thread um, and do it just for, change out your bobbin just for this last step. Okay. Um, somebody says the big white piece of vinyl is where is the Kathy big Beck. okay what's the kathy is the big white piece vinyls yes all of this uh so this is cork this was fabric oh wait you're not looking at i don't have the right camera on this is cork this white was fabric this is all white vinyl this is called white promo vinyl and i got this from my punk broidery i do have a link to their website in the description box. A lot of vinyl I've gotten is from them. The promo vinyl, this is only $5 for a big roll and they come in all the basic colors. They have a little bit of a texture to it. I don't know if you could see it. There's a little bit of texture to it, but this is great and it comes in all the solid basic colors and it's cheap and you get a lot of it. So that's the bottom is it is vinyl. You want something on the front for this part and for these two pieces, you want all that to be something that when you cut it, it's not gonna fray. It's gonna give you a clean edge. So think the leather, cork, um, felt will do it. Uh, I think that's all I can think of. They have glitter. Um, vinyl. It's not the HTV, not the kind you put on shirts or make stickers with. It's, it's thick like this. It might have a canvas back. Um, like this one, this is glitter. Uh, this is a, a very thin vinyl, but it's, it's not heat activated or anything like that. It's, it's made the same way as this is, but it's glitter. So you, there's lots of options on my punk broadery, sweet and sassy blanks. Uh, Melissa, it, Designs by Little Bee has an Etsy shop. She sells some too. I bought several pieces of vinyl from her before. Oh wait, I gotta switch the camera. Thank you. I know there's a delay. It's weird with the delay. I'm just making sure. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're at the last step, right? I slid. Just be. You know, careful when you slide it on. That's why that piece of tape right there helps. So whether you slide it and that gets caught. I got everything taped up. 
it's all going to stay in place even though it's upside down. Slide the hoop in and it's on the last step. I want to change the thread. I'm on black. I'm going to change it to white. So mine will be white thread on the front and the back. You can do black thread on the front and still have the white on the back. It's up to you. When you're doing a bean stitch, it usually keeps it to where the front color, the top color stays on the front and the bobbin stays on the bottom. Okay, and we're done. So now it's going to do a bean stitch. Oh, wait, crap. I did, I wanted to show you something and I didn't do it. So it's got that. I'm going to cut. Oh, I hear things moving. I wanted to show you how to prevent the knot. The tape came off, but it didn't move. So that's good. All right. You see this big old knot that happened back there? I was trying to show you how to prevent that. So let's pr let's pretend I didn't do that. I got some. I don't know if I can actually get it out. And it did go through the tape, which is fine. I can pull all the tape. The tape's like tear away. You can pull it all out after. Let's see if I can pull this out. Yeah. Okay, it still has a little bit, but let's pretend none of that just happened. And I need those tweezers, I'll get it. And I'm gonna show you how to prevent that from happening. I always forget. And I was, I was excited because I thought I was gonna remember, but then I still forgot, see? All right. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think it's out. All right, starting over. No. Let's see, I think it'll still work. I got my hand underneath the hoop so that I don't pop it out. Okay. All right, slide it back on. I'm gonna back up so that the beginning of that step starts over. Okay, so on the last step, let's... All right, I'm going to put the presser foot down. Ow. Grab your thread. Oh wait, put the presser foot up. Pull the thread. I got it pulled, right? Now put the presser foot down. I won't let you pull it with the, the thread down because this all locks up. Okay, I have the thread. Needle down. Needle up. Try and pull your bobbin thread through the bottom. So now I have two pieces of thread. I don't know if you can see this. Top thread, bobbin thread. I got that. I'm gonna go over here, hold that to the side. Nope, press your foot stays down and start stitching. Oh, the bobbin's almost empty. <laughs> I gotta do it over again. All right, I'm going to cut. Okay, didn't cut though. Thank you. All right, let's try that again. Let's just put a new bobbin in. All right, so let's go over changing a bobbin. Bobbin, see, was almost empty. Yep. Okay, I buy pre-wound bobbins. They are the best invention ever. I used to wind my own bobbins for years because I was too cheap to buy a box of pre-wound bobbins. They're only like 20 bucks. 
but I was still too cheap to buy them because I could buy a giant spool of bobbin thread for like eight dollars. So I'm like, I'm just gonna wind my own. Yeah. Guess what happened? Every time I needed a bobbin, I didn't have one wound, and I had to stop and wind a bobbin and make my projects take that much longer. They are worth the twenty dollars or twenty five, whatever it is. I've I've been having this box for over a year now. So and I still I still have yeah I'm still on the first layer. Okay, so you want to hold the bobbin where the thread is going counterclockwise, okay? The thread is coming off the, when I'm looking at it, the left-hand side, okay? That's what you want. You drop it in. I still, I got my thread here, I'm pulling it. It's gonna go around the thread path. It's got little arrows showing you where it goes. Now, when you get right here, don't cut it yet. Pull, pull a good 12 inches, then cut it. That is going to set your bobbin tension. If you ever have white thread coming up on the top, it's either two, two problems. You have it going the wrong direction. You might have it going clockwise, or you have it the, the, the way it's supposed to be and you pulled it and you just cut it and, and it didn't set the tension. Usually when you have tension problems, it's one of those two things. So there we go, we covered something. That, because I ran out of my bobbin. <laughs> Okay, once again, how to prevent the knot on the bottom of in the hoop projects. Pull your top thread, lower your presser foot, lower your needle, bring the needle up, pull. Oh, I can't, I got the, 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 the thread needs to be on top of the presser foot. It was stuck underneath it. So I'm gonna do it again. Needle down, needle up. Now I can pull it. And now I got the bobbin thread. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that over to the side and lower the needle. No, wait, I have to hit okay. Now I got a green light. Now I'm gonna go. So I'm just holding this out the way. And when it moves a little bit, I'm gonna pause. Okay, now I can trim this. That prevents a knot happening if it, cause sometimes they look really ugly and they're right in like the field of vision where you would see it on the bottom of the project. That's gonna prevent that knot and then you're gonna have a nice clean stitching on the back. On the front, it always looks good. It's on the back that you get that big old knot. All right, so it's gonna go around the whole thing. Remember, in these edges, I have three layers of vinyl. My machine's stitching through it fine. But if you're worried, you can get, they have thinner pieces of vinyl. They have, um, I have a piece of cork that's super duper thin. And you can use felt. Let's see. Um, let's see. Yay. Okay, I see uh, Geraldine watches Bethany, and she Bethany mentioned me in here, and that brought uh, in her video, and that brought her here. So welcome, we're happy to have you. Okay. Yeah, Bethany has excellent videos, and her craft room, rethread upper. Oh, I hear Elise crying. She hit her head on something. Of course. They have adults. They have adults. There are, are there adults in the house? They, yeah, one is a nurse. He should be able to take care. Yeah, when, yeah, Adam's a safety guy. Uh, we had some, some weirdness happen at the bottom of this thread here. So I'm going to cut this. I'm almost done, baby. I hear her crying for me. Um... All right, I'm re-threading now. If I just, I'm going to back up a little bit because I don't know where the, well, the thread broke way back here. So that is when this minus button, I could back up 10 stitches and I'm just keep backing up until I get, I want to back up past where I see stitches. I want those stitches to overlap. 
Yeah, and I'm going to pull it again. Okay, so there we go. Did I not rethread it? No, nope, I didn't hit the button. Okay, now it's rethreaded. Now I'm going to lower the needle, bring the needle up. Oh, my baby. She was, she was trying to get the bobbin thread. So I'm just trying to get that bobbin thread back out again so I don't have another knot of where I started stitching. But it seems like I have a knot. And that's a problem. Okay, let's cut all that and start over. Okay, needle down, needle up, no bobbin, nope, I'm about to give up on the, uh, not having a knot on the back, there it is, but I need it to go through. No, nope, it won't go through. I give up. All right, there'll be a knot there. I'm going to cut this because it's like way too long now. And go. So it's just going to pick up stitching where that um, thread break was. folks so now all we have to do is trim and load our notebook so we're done here let's see eh, we have a little knot on the back but it's not bad okie dokie let me check the comments um so Linda um, said the good good tip for the bobbins and the tension. Yes, the pre-wound bobbins are. Let me give you a link to my website. Let's see. Let's see. Where do I want to send you? I want to send. Where's those banners? Here we go. This is my website, CarlyBell.com. All right. When you go to my website and you scroll down a little bit, it says brand new to embroidery start here. Um, and I have like 10 posts on all things. One of those posts is supplies. And I have links to all of the bobbins, the thread stands, the thread, the scissors, um, stabilizer, all the tools and things you need to get started besides the machine itself. You know, because like when we first got started, we bought the machine and we're like, OK, yay, we're good to go. No, you know, you're not. You need, <laughs> you know, like two, three hundred dollars more stuff <laughs> on top of the on top of the machine. <laughs> um, you need the stabilizer. You need. Um, well, the machine, yeah, the, the machine usually comes with a hoop, but it doesn't come with all the hoops. Sometimes you got to buy extra hoops. Um, but stabilizer, thread bobbins scissors spray adhesive uh the the fun vinyl fabric it goes on and on blanks things you actually want you know when you're not doing in the hoop you're creating something new so that's really fun but when you're not doing this you're embroidering something else so i have tons of blanks in my craft room too all right but check out the website scroll down when you see new to machine embroidery start here click that all right, popping that out. We are done. Oh, we're going to go over snaps, too. I forgot about that. We're going to go over how to work with snaps in my snap press. This is the snap press, the pink one. I did have a small one. I don't know where it is. It might be in that brown basket. I could show that one, too. No, not that brown basket. The dark one with the cream uh, liner. Yeah, down this middle shelf. Oh. There you go. 
All right, so we're done with this. You can, let me see. Oh, is it that small? Yeah, it's like a little handheld thing. <laughs> um, this is an eyelet punch. No, maybe it's not in here. Ooh, I forgot I got star snaps. I gotta play with those. Okay, no, it's not in here. All right. Okay, before I start messing more with this, one of, okay, well, you see this is where the masking tape was? It's stitched through it, it's fine. You can pull it right out, like tear away. See that? The paper tape will act the same too. The only place I got a little bit of tape is like right here. It's a little harder to pull out, but there we go. I got it. This is where my thread, <clears throat> this is where my thread broke and I couldn't get the bobbin thread to pull up. I got this bit of uh, thread right there, you see? I'm gonna cut that. I got a little knot, but it's not bad at all. I got some, this looks worse. This is, um, this must be where the thread broke. It's got a bunch, a little bunch in here. I'm going to trim all of that. It seems like I can never get like a nice clean back. I always have something. It messes up. All right. I'm just, homemade. yep, it's homemade. The machine didn't make it. <laughs> well, the machine did make it, but I, I helped a lot. <laughs> Now, this the next step is also a preference. Um, you can just start trimming right away, and that's what I'm going to do. You could also, I don't know where this tape came from. Um, oh, that's the other piece. You can just start trimming, right? You have your, your outline. It shows you right where to cut. You can do that. Some people like to tear the stabilizer right here as close to the design as they can. It really is up to you. This, both of the notebooks I've done, I didn't tear the stabilizer out. I just started cutting. You can't see the stabilizer in between the layers of vinyl. You really can't see it on, on any of these projects. So you can just start cutting if you want. Right, gives you a little something more to hold on to. All right, now with cutting, I have these Fiskars nonstick micro tip scissors. I don't think I made a link for these. They're on Amazon though. Um, I got mine at Joann's. Um, you can use any scissors, you just, you want them to be sharp. And I personally have a pair that is dedicated to cutting vinyl. So I have a pair of fabric dedicated scissors. These are my vinyl dedicated scissors. And then I have everything else scissors. When I get in really tight corners, these scissors still work for me a little harder, but they do work. But I'm just going to cut... I'm not a good measurer, but I'm going to say an eighth of an inch, maybe. It doesn't seem like it's a quarter. It's like an eighth of an inch. That's how far away I'm cutting from the stitch line. And I'm not perfect. I am not a cricket or a silhouette. I'm just cutting. And it, it looks fine. It really does. Like, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't try. Um, you can always, if you make a jagged cut for some reason, you can go back and trim a little more and, and, and fix it. Um, it does not have to be perfect. And you'll be surprised how forgiving it actually is. Um, okay, so now I'm getting to this corner. This is when I'm going to cut. I'm going to probably, I'm going to position the end of my scissors where I think I want my line to end. And I'm going to snip all the way through so I get that good and then that allows me to to get in here 
and try and go. And I'm going to do the same thing until I get to the scissors. And we'll go right there. And I clip it all the way through. See, it doesn't look great, but I can go and maybe fix it a little bit when I'm done. And now I'm just going around the eraser. And the more you do this, the better and the easier it gets. I don't I don't think I would use a rotary color cutter no I don't think I'm that precise with my rotary cutter I mean maybe just for this straight run you could and I'll try it we'll see all right yeah right and it's thick yeah so I'm going here and I'm going all the way through to snip and then see, now I could come from this direction. I like when I cut on this side of the line because I, I pretty much use my thickness of my scissors as a guide. Okay, so let's try the rotary cutter. Okay. I got, I got this. Where's my ruler? Right down below. Hmm? Yeah, right here. <laughs> okay. So, oh, and then with the with the with the ruler, I could really get it. Is that a quarter of an inch? Yeah, a quarter of an inch. I could line up this pink line here right on the stitches. Let's see how that looks. Oh, it cut through all three. That looks good, but it's too, uh, this side is much closer. I, I'm just going to eyeball it. Something like that, maybe. Yeah, you really got to hold it. Yeah, it's okay. That's not bad. Okay. I could do this one, and then I could round the corners. I do have some tiny little marks in there. I think it's close to eighth of an inch. There we go. Let me get my mess. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so. This is what we're left with. And I got some sharp corners I'm around here. Kind of still wish this was a little closer to the thread. Hmm? I say no for me. For other people it would work. Maybe if I would have started on this side with it, because this side is closer to the stitching. But it, and another thing is, I am the only one that is seeing this. When I give this to a teacher, they are not going to, they don't see that. They don't see what we see. It's only the, the, the maker. Where did I put, the, can you hand me those tweezers? Thank you. It's only the maker that sees all these things. Like when Amy makes cups, she's showing me all these things on her cups. I think her cups are beautiful, but she's like, oh, but the bottom didn't come out the way I wanted. And da, da, da. If she wouldn't have showed me that, I would have never known. Cookies. cookies too. Yeah, Amy makes cookies and they're delicious. All right, this, I'm being a little extra, but I do want to clean this up. See, these scissors don't work the best. but they can. I just want to get that little corner out. There we go. All right, that looks decent. I like it, I like it. All right, so now we're gonna put the notebook in there and it's gonna go like this, right? Now, remember I said she put a placement spot for the snap here, but notice there's not one here. 
because it could really vary where the other snap can go depending on how you put the notebook in, maybe the particular notebook you use, if you want this to poke out a little more to be in. So I'm gonna show you how I figure out the placement. First, let's put a notebook in. I found it. All right, I'm sorry, I haven't been looking at the comments. What the deal you do? Ah, oh, really? There you go. Um, That's another good reason to buy pre-wounds. Okay, so I um, I put the notebook in. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole here. So let's talk about snaps for a minute. I bought a set off of Amazon. It is a cam snap set. However, this, these are what they call regular old snaps, regular size 20. And when I say regular, I'm talking about the length. Okay. And the length of the little spiky prong, right? You see how that's kind of short? We have to go through two layers of vinyl. So these do not work for me on most of my in the hoop projects because I'm usually going through two layers of vinyl. If you only have to go through one layer of vinyl, they work fine. And the little handheld press it comes with works. But I, um, I knew I needed to buy longer snaps, so I did. And while I was, since I was buying longer snaps, you know, I might as well buy a, a fancy press to go, <laughs> to go with it, right? <laughs> I mean, I wanted to get free shipping, right? Was that what it was? It was Black Friday sale. I don't know. But I really needed this. Um, and there's lots of things that I can do with it and that I plan to do with it. And I just haven't done yet. But I do a lot of snaps with it. And when you get this, or if you just have the handheld one, the main thing you need is to, to push the snaps close. Now, if you don't have a big one like this, you are going to want what's called an owl, owl, it's like a, it's a poker. It's, um, and it's going to pierce a hole in this spot, right? Instead of having that, I have a hole punch die, um, that I bought and it punches out a teeny tiny hole that is perfect for snaps. I have set these in several sizes so that I, if I do grommets or eyelets, I could punch a hole first. Um, another product you can get for that is a crocodile, crocodile, something like that. I've seen people have that will punch a hole. So my first piece I'm doing is I'm punching a hole. So I'm going to line this up on here. Make sure my hole punch goes right in that mark that's in the stitching. And now I punched a hole in that spot. Okay. Now, this is my other box of goodies. This is a box of the extra long cam snaps. So this, this one I don't need no more. I will need that one. Um, these come in tons of different colors. And it, it may look like minor and you can't tell, but that prong is a little bit longer. These are the extra long size 20 snaps. These are great for in the hoop projects. So, what color snap should we use on this one? I did gray on the last one. That wasn't too cool, I don't think. How about, but um, maybe the teal? Mm -hmm. Something you can see. Right? Yeah, you want it to be something you can see. That looks cute. How about that one? Because I don't have yellow. I think it would look best with yellow. Um, well, you can just see. Because, like, the rainbow. Yellow just to see what it yeah. But this yellow, it won't stick though. But we can right, see what it looks right. like. This one's too short. Just to see. But that's what the yellow would look like. Eh, it still it stands out a lot. It doesn't blend in good. All right, so let's do, let's do the teal color. I like that, and it kind of goes with the lines. It almost matches the blue lines in the notebook. So, I, all I have is that in. 
Now, I am going to do like what I think I would close it, right? Something like that. Just position it, think like where you would want it to snap. And then with my thumb, I'm gonna press because that has a pointed edge and I can see a little hole where this made. And that's where I'm gonna put my other die, my other snap. So I'm gonna punch a hole there. So I gotta take my notebook out and I'm gonna lift this back a little bit and put this back on my press and I'm gonna punch a hole right where that little mark was. And you can see it put a little hole there. So now we're ready to press the snap. So I need two of these with the, with the little prongs. And then they have what I guess would be a male and a female um, pieces for the snaps. And that's, you need all four pieces to do, finish the notebook, okay? So I got those four pieces. Now I need, right now I have, so the cool thing about the table press is this is all interchangeable. I can change out from punching holes to pressing snaps to pressing grommets um, to pressing rivets. All those things, they, they just are interchangeable dies is what they're called. So I bought a bunch the first couple Black Fridays ago and then uh, for the snaps and then this past Black Friday, I bought the stuff for the grommets because um, I had some projects I wanted to try with it. So I'm just screwing on the top part of the snap press and this is the bottom. And the way it works is you put the flat prong down in this little gray piece down here like that and then you you sandwich it in between your vinyl and then you put the other piece here and it pushes and it's going to poke that prong flat in this space and that's going to keep it in where it needs to be so that's kind of how it works so first i'm going to do the pencil so i know this part goes on the pencil so i'm going to turn it around upside down so that bottom of that snap is flat in the holder and I'm going to put doesn't matter either the male or the female piece on top and let's see if I can hold it nope I'm trying to see if I can turn my thing on the side all right you tilt this and I'm gonna hold it here yeah tilt it towards you so do y'all see that to lift it up it's heavy you see how I'm holding like the little prong poked poked through there and now I put this is the male piece inside of it and this is gonna smush it all right it's heavy yeah all right now we're gonna smush and it smushed that smite that spike down in there and so now that's that's done now we'll do this part, but on this one, we want the spike to go, the flat part to go on the inside the notebook, right there, right? Want that there. And we want the female part to be here. So I'm just gonna put that. I have to move the little flap that holds the notebook to the side. And then it did that. So now we have a functioning snap. Ta-da! Okay. Now put the notebook back in. And we are ready to go. Ta-da! <laughs> Amy likes it. So that is our notebook holder for tonight. How long that took? I can't tell. It only took two hours. 
Where the hole was made. What hole? I think the hole for the pencil, like where the where the snap went in. The the stitching will not fall apart right there. Um, have you done quilt? Oh, that's a question for somebody else. Okay. Um, somebody else. Somebody I know they. Uh, have, this is one of the things. Like I, I use sometimes. I do just like a live Q and A session where we don't make a project, but we just sit and talk. And I like it because then I get to see what everyone's saying. Cause when we do a project, I miss right. all the conversations. <laughs> all right. Yay. Christine said this is her first final project. I'm so excited for you. All right. Let's see. I'm reading. Okay. Delia and Tina are talking about quilting. Um, I will be doing some quilting in the hoop projects coming this summer. Yay, Marissa just got her cam snap press. Getting it out this weekend. You're going to love it. Yay, Angela. The, 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 cam, the tabletop cam snap press can be confusing. You can go to the website and be like, what do I need? Because it's all individual. Like you purchase the press and then you purchase which dies you want and then you purchase which pieces to press, whether it be a snap, a grommet, an eyelet, a rivet. All that can be very confusing. They have great videos on their website. You can also email them or call them and say, hey, this is what I want to make. This is what I want to do. And they will tell you exactly what you need. Super, super friendly. So don't hesitate to contact them if you are confused. All right. Delia, what new machine did you get? I know she has, I think she has a Stellar or a Luminaire, and she has the Persona. Did you get another one? I need to know. <laughs> All right. And so um, also with Cam, so they have three options. You can get the, the, the cheapest hand press, which works. Um, I've been told though, if you have any trouble with carpal tunnel or arthritis, they have a second hand press that's called the professional hand press. And that one is easier on your hand. And that one takes the interchangeable dies. And then you can get the big table press, which I don't really have to press hard. I was just in an awkward position where I was reaching over to the, to the other side. But those are your three options. Okay. All right. So let me switch over. Hi. Um, so thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's project. Make sure you go use that coupon code, SIP and STITCH, um, on um, designs by little b so that you can get 30 percent off of your purchase oh yeah you have to spend ten dollars okay um so please let me know if y'all have any more questions couple announcements i had um we will have sip and stitch again next friday usually we're a bi-weekly thing but because of the way things fell in may we're doing two in a row so next friday we are doing an embroidered bathing suit, like a little girl's bathing suit. I have a seersucker bathing suit that I bought for Elise. It's like a size three or four. I never did embroider it. So I'm going to play with that this weekend. But I found some cute. So you can get them from, I'm going to put all the info when I update the Sip and Stitch homepage. But you can, I think you get them from Blank's Boutique. Or was it ARB? One of them have seersucker bathing suits. I also found some cute ones that are not seersucker um, on Amazon that I'm going to order um, for my, and I'm going to make, I'm going to make them for my friend's little girl. Um, and they look like a gingham print, but I think they're just the normal bathing suit material. So I'm going to order those and play around with them. And that's what we're going to do next Friday. And we're going to probably just add a monogram to them, but I want to play with stitching that stretchy type of fabric and what works best on a bathing suit. So I'm going to play with around with that this weekend. 
and then I'll show you next Friday. And then, oh, Delia said, looking at getting a long, long arm. Fancy. Okay, I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet, Delia. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I am doing, though. I'm super excited um, about, I don't know if y'all saw Kimberbell. Y'all know I'm a big fan of Kimberbell. Um, they came out with a whole new line, a whole new brand called Me Time. And Me is machine embroidery. Um, and there it's a subscription line to where it's the Bella box, which we're familiar with. And I've gotten in the past, the Bella box is now under the me time brand. And then they got two more subscriptions coming out. One is called perfectly pieced and that is quilting in the hoop. And then they're having a Christmas one come out. Um, I am so excited. They reached out to me and I am going to be a kind of brand ambassador for them. So super duper excited about it. Um, I'm going to be showing you videos every month on what uh, particular box is coming out and what's in it and what we can do with it. So that's going to be super fun. So look forward to that this summer. The first is going to be the Bella box, which gets released. You can, so you can buy it now. You can pre-order it or whatever, but it won't get shipped till June 1st, I think. So I'm super excited about that. And then I... When I move to my new craft room, I'm thinking about getting a Juki sewing machine um, for some of those quilting projects. It's just a, a plain straight stitch machine, but it can handle the layers like involved with quilting. And I would like to eventually get around to trying to sew, make some bags. So I'm thinking about getting um, a Juki sewing machine. So if you'd like to see that kind of stuff, along with all the embroidery stuff, let me know and I'll try and gear some sip and stitch projects or other videos on those kinds of things. I know a lot of people have Jukies and love them. So yeah, Angela has one. Yay. So, but I'm not ready for the long arm yet. <laughs> Amy would die. I'm going to show her a picture of what a long arm looks like. It literally is like the whole length of my, yes, yeah, so she's I'm like, so you don't have room for that. <laughs> We're going to nix that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I can, I can free motion quilt with that Juki. And I can also free motion quote my, with my persona. I just have to get an um, attachment for it. So yay. I see Cindy signed up for the Bella box. So yay. We'll be doing some projects from there when it comes in. So yay. Um, Karen said she has the brother um, straight stitch machine. I think I know which one that is. All right. Um, yes, Delia, that's the one I'm looking at, the 2010Q, um, and it goes real fast, yeah. I heard that's a really good machine, and then what I'm also thinking, because I'm, you know, trying to compact everything in, in the room, and I got way too much stuff, Sewing Machines Plus has a really small sewing cabinet. I don't know, I think on Thursday they had, uh, yesterday, they had a really cool show with Arrow and they showed you all the fancy sewing machine cabinets that start off as a small little cabinet and then they open up all kind of ways and, and make it huge. They have a really small one that only opens up one way and the machine can go down and, and up in it. I think I'm going to get that and it will roll and fit perfectly underneath my counter height L-shaped desk that my machine I used on uh, tonight. And so that can be the Juki table and it could stay in that cabinet and I could pull it out when I want it. And that would be a sewing table for me that is table height because everything else in my room is counter height. I don't have anything to sit down at properly, I guess you would say, because everything is bar stools or standing, which I sew standing. But, <laughs> um, but I'm thinking about that. So those are all things that might be coming um, in the new craft room. And I'm going to document all of that when we start putting it together. I'm going to show you how I organize the room, the new cabinets we're going to put in, the craft desk. Um, if you're interested in the L-shaped desk that I have right now, we, me and my husband made a video while we were building it to show you how we put it together. So all of that is on, the, um, on my YouTube channel. You can see. All right. Okay, so... Rachel, this is a question I don't know the answer for. So the coupon code for Designs by Little B, Melissa didn't tell me when it expired. So I'm going to get with her and find out. And I will update the description box for this video. And I'll post it in the Facebook group. But I'm hoping it lasts at least a week. 
usually when, when I ask people to give me a coupon code, I, I ask that it goes for at least a week to give people time that are watching the replay that they can still use it. So. Yes, Delia, you've told me about Tiffany's Quilting Life, I think, before. I have to watch it. All right. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. This was a super fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will be back next Friday. We're going to monogram some bathing suits. It's going to be fun. I hope you can join me. Thanks so much. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.